Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing market wrap for Monday, September 9th, 2019. And this one I'll do for um, public um, uh, followers of the site and those on the YouTube channel. I just wrapped up a comprehensive video for subscribers. It's actually the second video today. That one, um, there's just there's so much right now going on. I, I had price alerts popping off today. Um, there's actually quite a few bullish I, I came across some bullish and bearish setups a uh, couple sectors individual stocks uh, so there's there's trade ideas out there and um, you know the broad markets one part of that now it, the broad market I think is very related right now um, tied in tightly with the risk on risk off assets in other words stocks are risk on risk off assets are those that I mentioned in the last week or so hedging up um, my my uh, my swing short positions with uh, shorts on uh, gold silver platinum the precious metals as well as treasury bonds all of which have worked out uh, and then some to help offset those losses on the swing shorts. Meanwhile, I'm still actively trading as always in the in the day trading active trading account I call it, um, including a day trade you know reversal from short to long today on the uh, equity indexes, which I'll go over in a second here. So I just wanted to say again, if you're a member, this video is just a recap of the two I did earlier today. Not a lot to report. I'll just start out here with the uh, S. PY, uh, the S&P 500 tracking ETF was flat today, 0 0.03. That's a flat close. So really, after the breakout, you know, the bigger picture has been the breakout above the recent trading range, which is, as I said, it's until unless it fails that you have to take it as bullish. Uh, and I'm sure that's, you know, obviously what a lot of people are doing. I still suspect it'll fail, and at the very least, I'm looking for a back test of there. So I'll go over things to watch some some nearby levels. And developments to look for but since we broke out it's really been um, uh, just zero follow-through you know we had the day of the breakout was impulsive as I said it would be before it even happened because undoubtedly you had a lot of stops cleared out and uh, once we broke out as you can see on spy futures even show it a little better but uh, spy and QQQ uh, we've traded sideways uh, since the breakout right there there's a the sideways trading range remember the breakout was on Thursday and so it's been nothing but sideways trading a little breakdown today uh, I'm gonna get to the charts the futures they tell a little better story they paint a better picture right now here's and QQQ as well so on QQQ uh, a couple things to note here's Thursday right here this is a day of the breakout so QQQ since the highs that morning shortly after the market opened that was the stop clearing move right there that was the all the impulsive buying came that day on the gap up and that's where most of the stops were blown out for shorts longs went in on the breakout and we have yet to even equal that high so we hit the high on thursday and that high has still not been uh, uh matched you know tested or broken above uh, in other words we traded up until today in a very tight sideways trading range and then we broke under I had this support level here about 19128 that's the bottom of the trading range we broke below it which would have itself provided a you know a short term trading op for active traders day trade and then we rallied right back uh, there was some a technical setup on the 1 minute chart that I uh, shared in the trading room today there was a catalyst for that move and then they parked it right back at the bottom you can see of that uh trading range so that's it. I mean, the little micro world here, QQQ broke support uh, and then rallied back to close at resistance, which is that former support level. Remember, in technical analysis, support once broken becomes resistance. But it's kind of smaller picture stuff. You know, the bigger picture is uh, the breakout's still intact. Um, you know, we traded sideways. You could say just, you know, the market's digesting the gains. Um, and we'll see what happens. I've mentioned a lot of my trend indicators, not all, but most of those intermediate term trend indicators are still bearish. For example, one of those is uh, one of many. It's uh, the uh, 9 EMA, the signal line on the PPO. When it's below the zero line, the trend is bearish. And when it's above, the trend is bullish. So that one, uh, of again, of, of others, is uh, still bearish as of now. Um, so to me, it's a matter of I still maintain that I think at best 
there's minimal upside in the market from here. Uh, if we pop to a new high in the next uh, week or so, it will be, if it happened in the next week or so, it is guaranteed, 100% guaranteed to be in a, a divergent high. Again, if it happened in the next week or so, uh, because that would take us up there. And you can see from the posture of the indicators, it would simply extend. We had divergence here at this high that triggered that, you know, was a catalyst for that correction. And those same divergences would be extended um, if if the market were to power up in the next week or so. Uh, and then that would probably give us what we've had as just a series of in the last almost two years now. Every time the market's made a new high, uh, they cheer it on TV, in the media, but it proves to be a marginal new high. We're talking a couple percentage points at best before the the next uh, drop in the market. So yes, it is stair-stepping higher. You gotta give it that, that if it pops to new highs, it's a new all-time high, um, but the uh, returns you know, for the last couple years now almost are, are, are pretty much flat uh, and then of course nothing big happens until that trend line this is the probably the most important if there was just one level to watch end the video now hit the stop button go home is watch this trend line off the lows on December 24th I don't want to oversimplify but it is a very important level uh, it's a level that's been held here and uh, we need the tech heavy QQQ to break down so that's those are the levels I'm watching and then I think Really, right now, my focus is mostly on the futures. We had, uh, again, there's a, a divergent high. We had divergence here recently on the uh, NASDAQ 100 futures. That's what we're looking at here. In fact, let's zoom in a little tighter so you can see this chart. And these are levels to watch. So just most recently right here, no, oh, draw, that's fine. We had uh, a little small divergent high, and that... Uh, went on um, let's see grab this line tool here pushed up made another divergent high and pretty much have been moving sideways since as I just showed you with QQQ let's not read too much into it. it's a sideways trading range but the divergences have remained intact and as I said on uh, the daily chart there even on this smaller 60 minute time frame should the markets push up and uh, hit this next overhead resistance we have resistance on both ES and NQ. As I did a video this morning when we were closer to the top of these ranges, I measured it out. It was about a half a percent rally uh, to get to this 79.25 level on NQ, and I'll show you in a second a comparable level on ES. And I said I'd put about 50-50 odds whether that happens or not, and I'll still maintain those 50-50 odds. Uh, go up there, and again, it's from today's highs. Now, at this point, with this drop we had in NQ today, it would take about 1% to get there um, because we, we fell about half a percent. Either way, that is guaranteed if it happens soon again. That's the condition. It has to happen soon. If it went sideways for three weeks or a month, these, these, these lines can change here. But if it happened this week, especially tomorrow or the next day, you will have solid 60-minute divergences, simply an extension. It's not as if these divergences didn't play out. They're just, they've been extended. Or, yeah, as of now, they're, they're extended. And I said this morning, they could start to play out for correction now, or we could pop back up. So you're not talking a big window, again, from today's highs where I did the video earlier, half a percent. And uh, I still favor at least a back test of this uh, August trading range. So as I was saying earlier, um, or in the previous video, bulls want to see this. If we get a back test, let's just assume it doesn't have to happen, but I'm leaning that way. If we get a back test, the ideal scenario for the bulls, they turn around and run, never look back, market goes to new highs. Um, second would be a, a minor break below. You can see there's some support levels along the way. There's also this big old uh, key downtrend line on QQQ, SPY, ES. We have downtrend lines off the, uh, the previous all-time highs right there. And so you can draw it a little bit different. We could probably draw right here. Yeah, let's do that. Let's just, let me erase that first trend line. Let's just move this one up now and do that. There you go. Captures those reactions high. Uh, like I, I always say, my uh, analysis is dynamic because the charts are dynamic. They're always changing. So there's the uh, most recent reaction highs. There's your breakout. It was impulsive. That's the trend line. So this would be uh, a bullish scenario too. Coming in take out the the top of the August trading range right there uh, suck in a lot of shorts uh, shake out a few weak handed longs that might have took the breakout then reverse it's not my preferred scenario but if it happens I'll try to recognize at the time if the charts confirm and um, maybe be a, you know go long there for a swing trade up um, again talking swing positions active trading go day by day I was you know came into the day 
short and reverse long and um, still long, you know, right now in the uh, with the futures. All right, so that's those are just levels to watch. Uh, and again, like I said, 50-50 odds whether we do that or whether we do this uh, tomorrow this week. Um, The big thing is, uh, if we do come back in here and test those uh, highs of the range, what happens? Do we fall back into the range? And if so, how does that look? So that's what I'm most concerned about. If we just go on up from here and we burn through these levels and keep going, then, well, uh, other things are happening. And then, uh, I'll, well, I'm not going to get into the gold and treasury bond shorts, but those as of now, and uh, as I said in the video to you guys, or to members earlier today, I'm very close to covering those. Uh, they were very close to some pullback targets I have. I'll probably trail stops down if those are hit, just in case this scenario happens where the market's head up to new highs. And there's also some downtrend lines, some falling wedges that I'm looking at on all the risk off assets. And if those pop, we could get a rally. So anyways, I covered that in detail earlier. Let's just focus on the equity markets here. And uh, there it is. So near term, it's kind of a little sloppy with all that. But again, you have pretty good resistance. And more important to me, you have these uh, pretty solid and clear divergences. Ignore them at your own peril. That that was a divergent high there. That was a divergent high. That was a divergent high. That was a divergent high. Um, I see no reason why this one will be different. If they burn through the divergences, so be it. But as long as they're intact, uh, I think the upside's minimal before the next uh, next uh, pullback here. ES, same story. Uh, like I said, six to one, half dozen to the other. Whether they push on up if then you know I have resistance pretty good resistance about 3,000 on ES the S&P 500 futures so if they did it it would look like this there's a divergence line if they can come on up there you're only going to extend this divergence that we already have building right now it looks something like this come on up PPO RSI then turn down if we reverse there at 3,000 much above that especially if the divergences are taken out well we got to give that to the bulls there's no arguing that as of now Divergent high, divergent high, divergent high, divergent high, divergent high. So to me, it's more so we come back in here. The big thing is if we do that, especially this week, which is what I'd like to see and what I was expecting last week, come in and test uh, that, uh, do a back test of the August trading range. How does that look? You know, we have a little small, I don't know if it'll play out, little bear flag right there in uh, ES. You can see ES broke down from this wedge right here at a little kickback rally. So if we come on down here, uh, the big level on ES is about 29.44. Now remember, if you're an ES trader, also watch the uh, comparable level on SPY, where the top of the trading range was. Uh, here, I'll show you. Uh, SPY, QQQ, you know, they all have well-defined numbers. On QQQ, that number was about 189.40, the highs there. SPY, it's even better uh, defined there, right there, about 294. So you want to watch all these levels. And again, you know, back tests, sometimes you get, they'll give you a perfect back test. Um, but more often than not, they're either going to reverse just shy if all eyes are watching 294 or come on down through there. Again, much more than that. Then you have the trend lines to watch, as I mentioned before. You have downtrend lines from the highs that you can uh, keep an eye on there. There's SPY right there, and I gave you that alternative trend line on QQQ. I just drew it on NQ. Actually, I already had it like this on QQQ. And so those are the levels to watch there. Okay, and just to conclude the broad market coverage, again, there's you know, watch the treasury, watch treasury bonds, gold, things like that. There's just a lot there right now, price from the chart, some very well-defined support resistance levels, some chart patterns that are that uh, could play out here soon. Uh, as far as the small caps go, uh, you have IWM in a near-term uptrend. It broke out here, hit my third target from a few weeks ago, which was back here after this divergent low. I laid out T1, T2, and T3 zone right here, which was just recently hit. We're a little bit above it now. There's the breakout. And as I, I said in some recent updates, that of all the indexes, should I be wrong if the market's going to new highs and beyond? I'm talking not a marginal two, one, two, three percent pop, and then you know another big dive down. If it's going up, if we have 10, 15 percent, whatever it is, plus upside on the market, this would be um, the one I think that'll outperform is the small caps. Uh, why? Well, they have the most potentially bullish-looking chart. Uh, divergent low, positive divergence. 
a very well-defined downtrend line to take out. They certainly have their work cut out for them. There's a resistance zone right there. You can see it. I have it running from 151, about 151.70 to about 152.70 with downtrend line resistance above. There's a couple key levels to watch and a very big level. If it pops a downtrend line, um, here's a big level to watch, about 159.40. Lots of reactions from above and below on that line. So uh, again, these are the salient points or uh, technical levels to watch on IWM. Now, so this is a bullish chart pattern. If if I had confidence in the bull market right now, I'd be all over this. I'd be waiting to position long on a breakout, maybe trade up there, recycle back in, you know, if we get a back test and then a breakout, look something like that. However, IWM peaked back in 2018. And here's the thing. Uh, a met, quite a few sectors peaked in 2018, like I talked about. So if we are in the earlier stages of a new bear market, what happens then is just like bearish uh, chart setups and bearish divergences don't play out as well or as often in a bull market. Uh, if this is early stage bear market action, then what will probably happen is these divergences won't play out or they won't play out for much, just get burned through. And then the next test of that trend line might be just another rejection like these previous tests right here and here really um, with another leg down. So that's that's food for thought. And uh, bigger picture, this is our bull market uptrend line. goes all the way back to the left of the chart here from 2019. So you can kind of look at it this way if you want a more simple view without all the lines there. Uh, look at it like this, a big uh, triangle pattern. This is a, a bull, bull market, decade-long bull market uptrend line support right there. And so there's a small cap sandwich between uh, support, about 144.20, and resistance. That gives you a little descending triangle pattern. And if that support breaks, then you have the all-important bull market trend line. And if that breaks, probably all she wrote. There's a big support down there. That'd be a, a tar first target there, about 125.85. And again, this can go the other way. Um, bulls want to see this. They want to see a breakout above there. And like I said, if it does break above there, it's not an all-in, all-clear. Of course, you want the large caps to confirm at the time. And then you have some pretty decent resistance, as I showed you a minute ago on the daily chart, just above it. So certainly a sector to watch and like I said the momentum is there because the technicals were stronger recently in IWM uh, as I said before we had you know nice clean bullish solid clear bullish divergence on the 60 minute chart which was the catalyst for this rally so far and there's a uh, next resistance level up here if it happens to continue to rally about 153.70 or so all right let's wrap it up here and uh, again see what happens i think this week will be pivotal pivotal uh depending on whether or not we back test and if we do back test how does that look because uh, i continue to maintain if we come through here and this breakout right here that we had from thursday if it fails and it's anything more than just a quick you know move back in here uh and then a rally on to new highs uh then i'm still very much open to and it would expect that waterfall selling I think if we got even anywhere halfway down towards the bottom of this range that should do the trick that should be um, uh, you know bearish enough it should be clear to all that the breakout failed and it would have you know bearish technical implications and bearish uh, psychological implications which are really one and the same you know the reason you know failed breakouts are bearish uh, it's not just because the charts did that it's it's you know what happens when uh, you get a breakout of a well watch level like this shorts get cleared out you get all the short uh, not all of it but a good percentage of the short interest which was very heavy back here cleared out you get longs piling in thinking the worst is over the breakout why not it's a breakout on face value you take it um, but if that breakout fails all those longs are trapped and they're underwater they're feeling pain so there it is there's the back test of the trend line let's just say that would be we'll keep it very simple the line in the sand this would be a breakout bullish if we hold bearish if we take out that line but then really bearish if we break out the uh, uh, fall back below that downtrend line again off the highs and you can see the points that I connected the downtrend to I know this chart's very busy but uh, uh, pretty much the two recent reaction highs uh, at the before the Thursday's breakout that's where that trend line comes in and then goes back all the way to the highs so uh, be interesting uh, this week should be interesting. So we'll we'll pick it up tomorrow. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.